Hi, and welcome to the Church Unlimited podcast. Church Unlimited is a vibrant, Bible-based church in North Lakes, Queensland that is passionate about helping people discover the genuine love of Jesus. If you're currently looking for a home church, we would love for you to join us for Sunday worship. For more information about our Sunday service or to find out how we can best help you, head to our website at churchunlimited.com.au. We hope you enjoy this message from Sunday service. And so we've been talking about taking ground over the last few weeks at church. We're in our breakthrough season. And so we've been having prayer meetings and we've been fasting leading up to conference. And I know for me, uh, God has been talking to me about a fair few things over this last little season. And, um, and, and so tonight, I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about taking ground as well. I know we've been talking about it for a lot, but I really feel like God's been talking to me about a few things in particular for tonight. And one thing that God's been talking to me about is, taking ground. We say that so flippantly sometimes, right? Like God's called us to take ground. Uh, But that word taking ground refers to us not having something, right? Like it's either we've never had something or it's been stolen, it's been taken from us. And so when we're in season of breakthrough, we're not just praying that God would just change our, you know, change our current circumstance, but we're here to take ground that we never had. We're here to take ground for the next generation. We're here to take ground for those who come after us. And so, um, you know, I, I feel, I like everybody else, I filled out my list. I had my five things on my list that I'm believing God for breakthrough for, for the sale of it. We've been trying to sell a business for a while and that's on my list here now because I need breakthrough for that now. And you know what? God challenged me about that like you would not believe. I filled out my list. I was a good Christian, right? Like I was a good church unlimited Christian. I filled out my list of things that I'm believing God to break through in my life. And I, God, I felt God challenge me to say, what are you believing for that's, that's not in front of you now? And what are you believing for that you don't need rescuing from right now? Wow. And that, right, it's pretty heavy. And, and it's safe to say I've got four lists now. Um, that changed pretty quick smarter. I've got what I'm, what I'm calling my, my freedom list. So things I am believing for breakthrough right now. But I also have three cards that I'm calling my future list. I've got three cards that I'm believing for. What is God going to do in the future for me? What is God? What am I believing God to bring breakthrough for, for what's not yet in front of me? And so tonight, I'm going to talk about that. I want to talk about being more than conquerors. You know, you might have heard this movie line. Usually it's in old like war films where it says, you know, we may have won the battle, but we've not yet won the war. God wants us not just to win the battle, but to win the war. You know, God doesn't want us to be able to pay our our bills week to week. God wants to see us have financial freedom. You know, God doesn't want to see us just make up with our siblings, and but, but God wants to see our families restored. God just doesn't want your pornography addiction to be taken away. God wants to see you have a healthy life, have a healthy marriage, have a healthy family. And so, you know, God wants so much more for us. What's in front of us is what we can see, but what's ahead of us is what God can see for us. And so what are we believing for? You know, and as God was speaking to me about this, you might have heard this scripture before. Uh, It comes in Romans 8 verses 37. And this is what we're going to base around tonight. It says, no, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Who's heard that scripture before? Give me a quick wave if you've heard that scripture before. Who has ever asked, what does more than conquerors mean? Have you ever asked, have you ever taken a moment to stop and think and think, yeah, we're conquerors, but what is more than conquerors? I know I've been thinking that. And so what I did is I went looking into that. I went to go research that. And what I mean by researching is I typed it into Google, right? How good's Google? It tells you everything you want to know and everything that you don't want to know, and everything else in between. But I went looking and started reading onto that. And um, and did you know that the word in this context, um, uh, where Paul's writing that we are more than conquerors through him who first loved us, um, it's actually a Greek word that is nikau, right? And nikau, do you know that, Dan? And uh, do you know that's actually where, you know, Nike? That's where Nike gets the word Nike from. It's from nikau, that's conquerors. I know you didn't come for trivia tonight, but you got some. So next time you're at a trivia night, you've got that under your belt. Ready to go. Um, but but uh, it means to conquer, to carry off victory, to come off victorious. You see, in a war, uh, it was the word that was used for a nation winning a war. Not just a nation winning a battle, but a nation winning a war. That word conqueror was for um, not, just, not just winning the battle, but taking the spoils of war, taking the treasures, taking the gold, and sometimes even taking the king as prisoner, Right? In today's day and age, we think about winning. We think about conquering for something, similar, uh, something simple like a basketball game, right? Like, like you win a basketball game and then you go home. And then what happens next week? Whether you win or lose, you come back next week and you play again. 
And, and today, we, we got this idea of winning is kind of just like something so trivial, like, oh, you can win or you can lose. It's okay. We'll come back next week. But, but in those times, I don't know if you, it says that, um, what I said before was that winning the war is not just winning the battle. It's taking the spoils of war. It's taking the, the prisoners captive. And, and so back then, if you didn't win, it wasn't like you could come back next week. You just, you didn't live. Like if you weren't the conquerors, you were the other side of that, which is the deads. Right, like I didn't have a word for that one just then, but but we we've trivialized winning so much in today's day and age because we can win any way we want, right? But back then, it it meant to win meant to not die, and so um, so Paul could have said, you know, it gives us a pretty good idea of what conquering is. Paul could have just said, knowing all these things, we are conquerors through through him who loved us, and that would have been pretty suffice, right? We've got a pretty good idea of what a conqueror is, and Paul could have just stopped it at that. But, but he went further and he said, more than, more than conquerors. And so what, is, what does more than conquerors mean? Um, and I had a look into that too. Thank you, Google. Uh, in this context, the, wor- the words more than actually means hyper, right? And so, so, so now we've got hyper Nikau, right? Which kind of sounds like something you'd order from Sushi Train, if I'm honest. But it's not. Go with me on this one. Um, yeah, I, any, any Star Wars fans in the crowd tonight? I've got a couple of guys, a couple of friends here in the house. Uh, when I think of the word hyper, I think of the hyperdrive, right? So it's the engine that, that shoots us the starships into light speed to go so much further, so more excessive than what the normal drive could be. See, the word, the word hyper means um, over, beyond, excessive, more than. Uh, another, another word, another like, way you would have heard hyper a lot is, oh, that kid's really hyperactive. Now, if you're a kids leader here tonight, don't say the name out loud, but you're all thinking of a child in kids ministry who is hyperactive, right? And so um, to say that we are more than conquerors means that we are hyper conquerors. We are, we are conquerors to the excess. We are conquerors that are more than, we are conquerors that are beyond imaginable. You see, when Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he defeated the devil, he didn't just beat the devil. He destroyed him. He, he defeated all power that he has over our lives. Every hold, every stronghold that could be over us. See, God, God was a more than a conqueror. He didn't just defeat the devil. He defeated his power and, and, and for the future as well. You see, too often we can see the power of God and, the, and, and kind of like, I guess, the struggle between good and evil as like a tug of war, right? Like we all understand what a tug of war is. You know, you have your equal teams either side and you always put a bigger person at the back as the anchor, right? Like we all know that. Um, but it's kind of like, and we're part of a tug of war and we think, oh, I've sinned this week and, and the devil's kind of winning a bit. And I'm like, oh, no, but I went to church this week and, and we're pulling this week. And then I'm like, oh, no, but I said a bit of a bad word at my dog this week and we're back this week. And then we're like, oh, but church this week, I sang four songs and was like, oh, oh, yeah. And, and, then, and, and right, God gets the victory, right? That is such a bad picture of the power of God. All right. I got thinking about this. So the power of God is, have you, ever, have you ever come home after a night out at, I don't know, somewhere, I don't know where I was going with that, but you've come home and it's dark and you flick a light switch on and immediately the light comes on and all of the darkness is dispelled, right? We've all, we've all had that happen. Um, and have we, have we ever had a moment where we come home and we flick a light on and it kind of just is dim and it's kind of flashing and I'm not talking about South Africa load shedding foxes, I'm just, um, but... And no one understands that reference. I knew it was super niche, but I went with it anyway. That's all right. But when you flick a light switch on, you don't have to convince the light to overcome the darkness. It's not like you're sitting there going, come on, darkness, you can do it. You can do it. No, no, no. When you flick the light switch on, the the battle's already won. It's not even a battle. And so that's how we need to start seeing the plans of God for our life is that it's not actually a battle between good and evil. God's already won. God has already overcome. And so when we flick that switch on, that light switch on, the power of God comes and defeats all darkness. In John 10, verses 10, it says, um, the thief comes only to steal, to kill and destroy. And I have come that you may have life and life to the full. Life and life to the full. To be a conqueror and to be more than a conqueror. And so when, when we think about, I don't know about you, but when I think about stories of overcoming, of conquering, of victory, of uh, the underdog, I think of David and Goliath, right? We've all heard the David and Goliath story. We're going to go Sunday school a little bit, Pastor Paula. I was looking at this Paula, but I, I said Pastor Paula and we just recovered. We're going to go a bit Sunday school tonight and we're going to talk about David and Goliath, right? And whether you've been at church for two weeks or you've been at church for 20 years or maybe this is your first time at church, 
I think we've all heard of David and Goliath, right? Every sports commentator has heard of David and Goliath. It's the great story of the underdog overcoming, right? But if you haven't, let me just give you a quick point-by-point highlights, and then we'll get into it. Uh, The Israelites and the Philistines are enemies. Pretty clear. Um, The Philistines have gathered for a battle, and Goliath, the giant, makes himself known and makes the deal of a lifetime, right? Like the kind of deal where it's like you can buy two Milky Ways for three dollars, or one Milky Way for a dollar forty-nine. Like that's the kind of deal he's making. That if I beat you on a one-on-one battle, you become our slaves. If you defeat me, we become your slaves, right? Like it's not a very good deal. It's kind of like we have whole armies here, and you're putting it down to one giant, one man. Anyway. Um, enter the shepherd boy David, right? The little shepherd boy David. And so uh, we, we, I think we kind of understand the David and Goliath analogy. If you're struggling to get that picture in your head, I've got a photo here. Like, can you chuck that up for me? This is a bit, of a, a bit of a visual representation. This is my friend Ben, got baptized a few weeks ago. Incredible. I, just, I saw that photo and I was like, if you don't understand David and Goliath, there's a bit of a visual representation to kind of help you along the journey there. All right, you can take that off now before my ego just... Um, um, anyway, um, and then David takes his sling and his stones and his staff and uh, kills Goliath and uses his own sword to cut his head off. That's my favourite part. That's pretty awesome. Didn't just kill him, but then took his sword and cut his head off. Brilliant. Um, and so we're gonna, I'm going to pick it up here kind of halfway through that story there. We're going to read from Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 17, uh, verses 39 to 40. It says, Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic, put a coat of armor on him, and put a bronze helmet on his head. And David fastened his sword over his tunic and tried walking around. Because he was not used to them, I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. Um, so he took them off. Then he, That wasn't supposed to be a joke. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, and put them in his pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in hand approached the Philistine. Have you ever wondered in this story? I've read this story. I, I grew up in church my entire life, and I've heard this David and Goliath story a thousand and one times. But have you ever wondered, why did David pick up five stones? Have you ever wondered that? Is it just me? But, but I've always wondered, why did he pick up five stones? And uh, I know that there's a kid's song about there's a children's church song about it, the five da- finally a boy named David. That's as far as we're going to go with that. Uh, but there's a song about it, and he didn't pick up five stones, so that would be a great song about it. Um, he didn't pick up five stones because, do you think maybe that he didn't trust that God could do it in one, right? That's crazy because he had seen God's power at work in the, be- in the battle against the bear and the lion in previous seasons. You know, some scholars say, scholars, commentators say, uh, that he was preparing in case the Philistines attacked him after he killed Goliath, which is crazy to think that he's going to take a whole army on with four extra stones, right? Like, I, like he's going, oh, I might just need four extra ones for this whole army. Like, I, don't, I don't buy that one. Um, for me personally... I believe that David was preparing for a bigger miracle. Some other commentators say that, say that Goliath had four brothers. In, in, in 2 Samuel verses 21, it talks about uh, the descendants of giants and that were four, uh, four that was in the, the army of the Philistines. And so I love this thought, right? I love the thought that David bent down and picked up one stone. He's like, oh, this is for Goliath. Oh, wait. I know that God's already got this. Uh, this is for this fella. This is for this fella. I love the thought that he bent down and said, oh, this is for the sale of my business. Actually, this is for the house that we're going to buy. This is for the new car that God's going to bless us with. This is for the, do you know what I mean? I love the idea that David didn't just come in looking for the giant, but David was more than a conqueror. David could have come and killed the giant with one stone. We know that. Instead, he picked up, he picked up fire because he was prepared for what God was going to do in the future. You see, living, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, David was thinking of more than a conqueror, being more than a conqueror. You know, a few weeks ago, Pastor Paula preached an incredible word about praise. If you haven't seen it or heard it, jump on YouTube, jump on the podcast. It's an incredible message. And she mentioned something that really got my attention. She talked about how Christians, we can have emergency faith. And we can, when, when things come up, we can kind of have that emergency faith where then, then we're on our knees in prayer because, God, we need you to do a miracle now. You see, living that kind of emergency faith can, can easily set us in the victim mentality. Poor me. If I can just get through this battle, if I could just pay my bills this week, then, 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 then we'll be okay. You see, when we can go from that victim mentality to becoming more than a conqueror, all of a sudden those nights that we spent on our knees begging God, pleading God, God, if you could just give me enough money, those prayers turn from that to, 
God, I thank you for what you're going to do. God, I thank you that you've got more for me than just these bills to get paid. And when we, when, we can, um, when we can shift our focus from being conquerors to more than conquerors, it's hard to be the victim when you're thanking God for his goodness. Amen. It's hard to be a victim when, you, when you're on your knees thanking God for what he's going to do in your future. And so um, I don't know if you've, got, if you've got kids here tonight, you'll understand what I'm saying in this next story. Uh, but my kids, there's a, there's a statement, right, that says, enough is enough. Come on, we've had enough. Enough is enough. My kids don't know that, right? I've been to Kmart more times than you can think of. And every time I'm at Kmart with my kids, they want something else. They're like, oh, Dad, can we get this toy? No, we got, the, we got a toy last time. Oh, but I really want this toy. My kids don't understand that, right? Like they don't understand the statement enough is enough. How come, come when it comes to the things of God, we're content with enough is enough? How come when it comes to the things of God, we're okay with just God doing a miracle that's in front of us? You know, I'm, um, I'm not just talking about the faith that we need for the immediate miracles, but the type of faith that doesn't just believe for God, Goliath to fall, but for four other giants to fall. And so tonight, I just want to bring us, in the, in the little time that we have left, I want to talk about three ways that we can be more than conquerors. Just, excuse me. <laughs> awesome. Number one is have confidence in God. I love the confidence of David to tell the king of Israel, do you know what? I don't need your armor. You know what? This is not for me. I love that confidence, right, Chris? That kind of confidence that says, that's you and you're amazing, but my God's bigger. My God is better, right? And, and, and if it's me, if I'm going up against a giant, if I'm running towards Ben in battle, I want every bit of armor you can give me, then wrap me in bubble wrap and just give me a straw to breathe out of it and let's just see what happens. Like, that's me personally. Um, but I love, that, I love that David, see, there was nothing wrong with Saul's armor. Saul's armor had won wars. Saul's armor had won battles in the past, but it wasn't David's fit. It wasn't what God had given David. And so you see, um, uh, God, David had seen uh, God's power when he defeated the bear and the lion in previous season. He was confident not in the armor that he was wearing or not even necessarily the, the sling that he had in his hand. He was confident in God and who God was. You see, Saul's armor speaks of the world and who the world says you are. But David's staff and sling speaks of who God has called you to be and who God has, has, got, uh, who God has called you to be. Sorry. Um, there's this, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a Ray Bartram sermon if I didn't talk about the North Queensland Cowboys. So strap in, we're going. We got eliminated last night. That's okay. God is on the throne. Um, back in 2017, the, Cow the North Queensland Cowboys met the Melbourne Storm in the grand final 2017 for NRL. We didn't win, but let's not focus on that part right now. Um, that's not important and never is important, Dan. I don't want to see it, mate. Um, but um, <laughs> but um, in 2017, the Cowboys went on this incredible mid-season run where we won eight games in a row. And then just before the finals, we lost, six, oh, we lost five out of six games, right? We should never have been in that finals. Um, but we made it there. And uh, before we made it to the grand final, the game that we played before was versus the Sydney Roosters, who were touted to be the favourites to win the grand final. They had done the opposite. They had a mid-season lull and then went on a massive run to make the grand finals. And anyway, um, we, we ended up smashing the Roosters. It was an incredible game. We made it to the grand final. And, and uh, it still stuck with me, this, this interview that they had with a, the post-match interview with Paul Green, who was the coach at the time. And uh, the, comment, the, the interviewer said to him, the reporter said, how did you feel being the underdogs and going into this battle and winning, uh, going into this game and winning. And, and I love that Paul Green's face showed at the same time as, as offended, he was just shocked. And he, and he said, he said, oh, I didn't think we were underdogs. And the reporter says, oh, well, you know, you just lost all these games. And Paul Green said this, this thing. He said, I just knew that if we played how we were made to play and we played to our strengths, that we would win. We never saw ourselves as underdogs. And, and see, they were confident in who they were and what they were going to do. Um, in this story, David's often touted as the underdog. I don't reckon David saw himself as an underdog. I reckon he saw himself uh, that if he, if he went to the presence of God, that if, that if he uh, went with God on his side, that he would win this battle. It was never even a battle for David. Um, I, reckon, I reckon he was a John 16, 33 man. And it says, I have told you in all things, um, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. See, David was confident in God. David was confident that God had already won the battle. He knew that the battle was already won. And we need to have that same confidence that when we're believing for more, when we're believing for more than what's in front of us, that God's already got it. God's already won it. Uh, number two is go to the stream. 
It says that he chose five smooth stones from the stream. When David, I love this. When David was going to war with a giant, the first place he went was the river. He went to the stream. What does the stream represent? The presence of God. It sounds like such a simple thing, right? Like we're like, of course, Ray, if you're going up against and you're believing for a miracle, you go to the presence of God, right? When you're in tough times, you go to God. Such a simple thing. Such a simple thing, Pastor Paula. Christians are dumb. We can be dumb sometimes, right? Right? I'll give you an example. My, my beautiful little girl, Sailor, is four. Uh, we went to the shops on Friday. We had a people free day and we went to the shops. And every time I ask my kids, hey, we live in Kalanga, don't judge me. We're about two minutes walk from the Woolworths there. And every time we go for a walk to the shops, I always say to my kids, who wants to come for a walk with dad? And Matt always says, oh, I'll just stay here. Sailor goes, dad, I'll come. Because Sailor knows whenever she comes to the shop with dad, wrapped around her little finger, this one. And so I remember walking past and, and she goes, dad, we need to get those unicorn lollies. I'm like, why, babe? She goes, because I love unicorns. I'm like, yeah, I love you. Let's go. We got some unicorn lollies. It was amazing. Around the corner, we saw these awesome chocolate marshmallow bites. And Sailor was like, Dad, we've got to get them. And I was like, you're right. We need to get them. And we got them. And so we're walking out of the shops. And then outside, there's this donut shop that has Oreo milkshakes. <laughs> My lanta. And Sailor goes, Dad, we should get a milkshake. And I love milkshakes. And I'm like, Sailor, let's, let's get a milkshake and drink it before we get home so no one knows. Uh, that's exactly what happened too. Should come to the shops next time, Matt. You'll learn. Um, <clears throat> see, my son, Matt, as well, every time we go to a shop and he wants a toy and I don't buy it for him, he's locked it away because he knows when he talks to Nana next, guess what toy he's getting? Guess what toy he's getting, right? Even my four-year-old and my seven-year-old know what they want when they want more, know where to go when they want more. So how come when we get a bad diagnosis from the doctor, we go to Google? <laughs> how come when we get an unexpected bill come across, we check our credit card limits? How come we don't go to the presence of God when we're up against giants? Even my kids understand that, but yet we still, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of that too. How come we still run to the wrong places instead of going to the stream first? Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Now, I'm not saying that uh, you shouldn't seek medical advice or financial advice. I'm not saying that at all. But what is your automatic stance? Is it one of faith? Is it one of more than a conqueror? Or is it to go to Saul's armour? Is it, is it to go to the world? See, what, what, we, what we don't ever see is that David needed to go to the stream. You don't just get perfectly rounded rocks from the road. You have to, your weapons are refined in the presence of God. David's weapon was refined in the stream. It was refined in the presence of God. David needed to go there. Number three is he chose five smooth stones. It says he chose five smooth stones and put them in his pouch. He didn't just like bend over to the road and pick up five random stones and give his best Aussie. She'll be right, mate. We'll go with that. We'll try, try that. Um, David was intentional about his actions and his decisions. So I'm, we used to live in Cairns, and uh, two minutes from our house was this nice little fresh, freshwater sh uh, creek that, that um, goes through the suburb there. And we used to go, me and Matt used to go skimming rocks all the time. And so if you've ever skimmed rocks at the creek, you know that you have to bend down. And, and pe we'd, we'd spend half the time there just looking for the perfect stone, the perfect weight, the perfect roundness, the perfect everything, just to make sure that this thing was going to get the best it could. And so, see, David could have went to the road and just picked up random stones, but he knew that to get the best outcome, he had to be intentional about his actions. And so um, I've, been, I've been kind of in, in ministry and in pastoral role for a little bit now. And uh, I can't tell you the amount of times I've had people come to me and say, oh, Ray, I just don't have time to, to read my Bible today. Oh, Ray, I just don't have time to spend time with God today. Uh, you know, a wise reverend, uh, Pastor James, once said to me when I was, when I was 21 um, and I was doing Bible college, he, he said to me, you saying yes to something is always saying no to something else. And you saying no to something is always saying yes to something else. And so saying yes to watching one more episode of TV might be saying no to spending time in God's presence. You saying no to watching that episode might be saying yes to spending time in God's presence. Don't, can, I be, can I be really blunt for a second? Don't tell me you don't have time to spend God, in God's presence. There's nothing more important than the presence of God. There is nothing more important than the presence of God. Be intentional. Um, you know, saying, saying yes to making a pledge in the, in the advancement offering, maybe that's saying no to a Netflix subscription. 
Maybe it's saying no to a couple extra coffees a week. We need to be intentional about what we're doing. See, believing for more then requires intention with our actions. You know, sometimes when we're preparing for a miracle, we think it's, it's actually like that. You remember the old Maybelline ad where it's like, it may not happen overnight, but it will happen, right? Like, I, I, hope, that, I hope that you bend down and you pick up five through the stone straight away. But you know what? It might take some choosing. It might take some finding. It might take some prayer. It might take some action. And so uh, as I've been speaking tonight, you might be sitting there going, that's great, Ray. But, but how does that matter to me? When, does that, when do I need to take that on? This matters when you're ready to shift from living crisis to crisis to living to the call of God in your life, to living for what God has for you in the future, from moving from believing for God to supply my needs now to believing God to do over and above, to excess beyond more than. And so we need to believe that God has more for us. You know, I've lived too much of my life believing for God to do breakthroughs just now. And I reckon there's a few of us here tonight who we're going to have to bend over and start picking up some stones. We're going to, make, we're going to have to take some actions in picking the right things. We have to spend some time in, in the presence of God at the stream to pick, to refine those weapons, to refine what God wants to do in our lives. And so I can tell you right now, when we can shift to that kind of mentality, it brings so much freedom. It brings so much joy. All of a sudden, I'm not worrying about the things that are happening around me now, but I'm just focused on what God's doing in the future. Amen. I want you to stand with me tonight, church. We're going to do something, we're going to do something together in a moment. Uh, but before we do, I just want to take a moment right now. Um, if you, you might have been here, this is your first time here or, or um, you've, you know, you've not been in a while and you, you're listening to me talk about this power of God and the more than conquering God and you don't know what I'm talking about. Or you know what I'm talking about, but you haven't experienced that. I want to take a moment right now. If you're sitting here and you've not made that decision to follow Jesus, if you've not made Him your Lord and Saviour, you don't know that power that I'm talking about. I want to take a moment right now uh, with every head bowed and every eye closed in this place tonight. I want to take a moment to give you that opportunity. If that is you and you've not made that decision before, I want to pray with you. We're going to pray together as a church. And all I'm going to ask is that you just you just flick your hand up and just give me a quick little wave and I'll see it and, I'll, and, and you can put it down again. But I just want to know who I'm praying for tonight. And so if that is you in this place tonight and you're, you're believing, you want to know this God that I'm talking about, you want to experience His power, would you just give me a quick little wave all over this place tonight? Awesome. Awesome, I see that hand. <laughs> Come on, don't wait another day. God's got more than for you tonight. God's got more than your current circumstance, your current situation. Come on, just one more moment, if that's you. Awesome. Come on, church, why don't we pray together? If that was you and you and you didn't pop your hand up, but you made a decision in your heart, why don't you pray this prayer with me? We're all going to pray together. Uh, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross for me. God, this, tonight, I make a decision to follow you. Lord, would you help me each day to be better? <laughs> God, we love you and we're so thankful for what you did for us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hey, I want to do one more thing tonight, church. And uh, it's a bit of a different a different response. We're not going to bring people down the front. We're not going to um, do that kind of stuff. We're not going to pray for people. But you'll see on your seat, everyone would have, I made sure our host team put, put one of these, one of these um, taking ground prayer cards on your seat. Have we all got one of them? And there should be pens on your seat. You probably threw them under or you put them in your bag to steal some pens. Um, you're in the house of God. Don't steal. Um, <laughs> but, but what I want to do is I'll take a moment right now. And if you, if you don't have a card or you want another one, just give our host team a wave and they'll get them out to you. But I want to take a moment. Our team's going to lead us in worship in just a moment, uh, in, in a second's time. But what we're going to do tonight is uh, I want to encourage you. You may have already done the future list like I was talking about, or you might have done the freedom list that I was talking about. But tonight what we're going to do is I, I thought we'd just, just do something really practical together as a church. And, that, um, and I think tonight, we're going to write down some things for our future. We're going to write down some things that we're believing for. And the team's going to lead us in worship. And you can do that in your own time. If you have to find somewhere, if you have to sit down, whatever you need to do, and maybe you've done this before, that's incredible. I'm so pumped for you. 
No, but, but for those who haven't, let's do this together tonight. Let's make some lists. Let's, let's write down what we're believing God to do in our future. You know, we might have written on our list for me, for myself and my wife. Like I said, we wrote down that we would sell our, one of the things we're praying for is to sell our business that we own. But on my, on my, on my future list, I've, I've written that God's going to bless us with provision to buy our first house. That's for the future. I don't know how God's going to do that, but I know that I know that our God is a miracle working God. And so tonight, we're going to take a few moments in worship right now. And what I want you to do is grab that card, grab your pen. And as the team leads us, why don't you just pray, God, what have you got for my future? God, what? start to dream a bit. Start to dream about what God's got for your future. Come on, do that in your own time. Awesome. Thanks, team. Thanks for joining us. We pray that you and your family are richly blessed by the love and grace of Jesus. If you're ever in the area, we would love for you to join us for Sunday worship.